Tottenham Hotspur went from spending zero last season to 114 million euros. Bravo. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Dominic Rich. If you're new around here and you love Champions League football, consider hitting the subscribe button because I'll be talking about the tournament all season long. In this video, I'll be doing my predictions for Group B of the 2019-20 Champions League. I will be doing every group separately, so make sure you go back and check out all the other group videos. Also guys, if you're interested in copying one of these cards, visit cardsplug.com slash Dominic Rich FC and use the code Dominic Rich FC to get yourself 5% off. You won't regret it. So, without further ado, let's get into this group preview and prediction. In Group B, we have Bayern Munich of Germany and they were last season's Bundesliga champions. Of course they were. Making successive Champions League appearances is Savena's Vizda of Serbia and they were last season's Serbian champs. And then we have Olympiakos of Greece who played second in the Greek league last season and had to come to qualifiers. They did so by smashing FC Krasnodar of Russia. And then we have last season's finalist Tottenham Hotspur of England. They did play place fourth in the EPL last season so you see what I'm talking about fourth and you're still getting rewarded but never mind that never mind that those are the four teams that will be vying for the two knockout round places in group B the Europa League place and the team that will you know, well well you're not really fighting for the last place are you so let's start with the German champions Bayern Munich who are currently managed by the 47 year old former Croatian international former Hertha Berlin Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Bayern Munich midfielder Niko Kovac. Kovac managed the Croatian team at the 2014 World Cup and his managerial honors includes a DFB Pokal with Eintracht Frankfurt in 2018 and then again in 2019 with his current club Bayern Munich. And despite a sketchy start to his tenure as Bayern Munich manager, he did go on to win the league in his first season in charge. So let's talk a little bit about Bayern Munich's Champions League highlights. The 29-time German champions are one of the only teams to win the Champions League in this current decade. They did so in 2013 when they defeated league rivals Borussia Dortmund two goals to one in the final. That win also helped Bayern Munich complete a treble that season in Jupp Heynckes' final season in charge of the club. Well, when I say final, he did come back to bail out Bayern Munich during Carlo Ancelotti's very tumultuous reign. Bayern Munich also won the Champions League title in 2001 and during the old Champions League era they did the three-peat from 1974 to 1976. Since winning the UCL back in 2013, Bayern has made it to the semi-finals on four different occasions but they have failed to get past Spanish oppositions every single time. In last season's Champions League, Bayern Munich made a round of 16 exit when they were defeated by the eventual champions Liverpool. Well there's nothing to be embarrassed about when it comes to that right key players for Bayern Munich includes their big striker up top Robert Lewandowski and despite him going absent in big UCL games he is still a very very important part of this team especially when Thomas Muller is absent most of the time but one thing Robert Lewandowski needs to change for him to get the ratings from people all across the world you have to show up when it definitely matters then there's Serge Gnabry who has proven that he has what it takes to play at the very very top he is edging ever so close to being a world-class player. And don't argue with me when it comes to that. The man has been putting up the numbers. And then there's Joshua Kimmich. He is a very intelligent utility player who can play both in defense and in midfield which makes him very, very deadly. And then there's Thomas Muller, who was part of the team that last won the title in 2013. He has been quite dormant for a while, so look for him trying to get a big season in this season's UCL. And of course, there's Manuel Neuer, the captain, who has not been at his very best after coming back from injury, but he is still responsible for keeping this defense organized and keeping the ball out the back of the net. Key transfers for Bayern Munich includes, they were quite busy during the summer transfer window so I have quite a bit to go through. They brought in Ivan Perisic on loan from Inter Milan. That would just give them backbone over there in the left wing position. They have Kingsley Coman over there and with the departure of Robin and Ribery, Perisic will offer the experience that Bayern Munich needs to get through this group. They also 
brought in the Barcelona outcast Felipe Coutinho. He is a very, very talented player, so I'm not really criticizing this move too much, but I have a feeling this was a last resort move for Philip Coutinho. I wish him all the best at Bayern Munich though. He will settle in very nicely. The Bundesliga tends to help players get back on their feet. Ask Paco Alcacer if you don't believe me. They acquired Michael Cuisance from Borussia Mönchengladbach and the French youth international has been showing a lot of potential. Bayern has brought in the World Cup winning duo of Benjamin Pavard and Lucas Hernandez from Stuttgart and Atleti respectively. This is part of their project to revamp their defense. In total, Bayern Munich spent 143 million euros. That's quite a lot because Bayern don't spend a lot of money historically like that that's a lot as for the players leaving the club Mats Hummels went back to Borussia Dortmund the very disgruntled Renato Sanchez went to Lille the aging Rafinha went to Flamengo in the Brazilian league Frank Ribery to Fiorentina James Rodriguez went back to Real Madrid and Arjen Robin finally hung up his boots and when you think about it those are some very high profile departures so it will be interesting to see how Bayern Munich copes with that they made a total of 54 million euros which puts them 90 million euros in arrears. Bayern is still going through what is a very tricky transitional period. So now let's move on to the Serbian champion Savena Zvezda or Red Star Belgrade. They are currently managed by the 49 year old Serbian Vladan Milojevic. He spent one season playing for Red Star back in 1996 but most of his time was spent playing football in Greece most notably for Panathinaikos. Milojevic took up the managerial post at Red Star Belgrade in 2017 after stints with a few smaller clubs. He has won league titles twice in as many seasons and has helped Red Star qualified for back-to-back -back Champions League group stage propers despite having to go through qualifying. That's a big feat. It's not easy coming through those qualifiers. He also won the Serbian Cup with Chukaricci back in 2015 and has the look of a very gutsy and steely manager trying to take Red Star back to Champions League glory. When it comes to Champions League glory, Red Star Belgrade definitely knows the feeling. They have won the Serbian title 29 times during their existence and their finest hour in the history of the club came in 1991 when they won the European Cup after defeating Marseille 5 goals to 3 on penalties. After winning the title, Red Star did appear in the European Cup the following year but they went absent for about 27 years and only made their return last season where they were drawn in the group of death alongside Napoli, PSG and the eventual champions Liverpool whom they defeated on the very same day my son was born, November 6th. Red Star Belgrade are currently back amongst Europe's elites after going through four rounds of qualifying and they surely have a point to prove. Key players for Red Star Belgrade includes their captain and playmaker Marco Marin. The midfielder is a former German international, once played for Chelsea and Olympiacos. Marco Marin has represented nine clubs throughout his career and he is still only 30, but I think his current stint with Red Star Belgrade is his best and I think he is mostly appreciated where he is right now. Then there's a 31 year old Canadian international goalkeeper Milan Bayer and he is definitely responsible for helping them get through those grueling qualifiers and back to the Champions League group stage. And then there's the striker Milan Pavkov. Liverpool's destroyer last season will be back to torment the souls of defenders all across Europe. They also have the Comoros international forward Ben Nabuani who scored 25 goals for the club last season. Key transfers for Red Star includes Jose Canias who came from Pauk on a free. He will be very familiar with this Olympiacos team and the real Real Betis player has moved to all four of his clubs on free transfers. They also made Milos Degenet's loan move permanent and the Australian international will surely beef up their defense. One interesting transfer that they did make during the summer transfer window was signing Genie Wijnaldum's brother, the left winger Rajiv Van Napara. And I've seen this guy play, he will surely add some flair to Red Star's attack. As for outgoing players, they did let go of 19 year old striker Dejan Joveljic. He signed with Eintracht Frankfurt Frankfurt for 4 million euros. Another young talented player to leave the club is Alexa Terzic. He moved to Fiorentina for 1.7 million euros where Red Star made 6 million euros during the summer transfer window. And I must also note that they spent 6 million euros as well. As for business during the transfer window, I don't think they did a whole lot of business but I guess they have faith in the players that they have. 
So now let's move on to Olympiacos, who is currently managed by the former Portugal international and sporting CP player, the 49-year-old Pedro Martins. He previously managed Portuguese club Maritimo and Vitoria Guimarães. He joined Olympiacos in 2018, replacing the outgoing Oscar Garcia. And after missing the Champions League last season, Pedro Martins has helped Olympiacos get back to the big stage. With a record 44 Greek titles under their belt, Olympiacos' finest hour came in the 1998-99 Champions League season. They topped a group that had Dinamo Zagreb, Porto and Ajax went on to the quarterfinals but lost to Juventus. They also made a few round of 16 appearances but Olympiacos has definitely failed to set Europe's elite competition on fire. But after three qualifying rounds, Olympiacos are back to attempt just that. Key players for Olympiacos includes their Greek internationals. Well, well, Greek Greece hasn't really been doing well, so <laughs> I don't know how key they are going to be. Their captain Costas Fortunis, Georgios Masuras, Andreas Buchalakis, Vasilis Torosidis, and Costas Simikas. Other key players include Portuguese goalkeeper Jose Sa, left winger Daniel Podence, and right back Omar El Abdaloui. Key transfers during the summer includes making Jose Sa's loan deal permanent from Porto. They brought in Ruben Semedo from Villarreal, the 34 year old Matteo Valbuena on a free from Fenerbahce, Elabi Sudani from Nottingham Forest, and Yassine Benzia on loan from Lille. They spent a total of 12.5 million euros, which is not a lot if you want to compete in the Champions League, to be honest. It will take somewhat of a great run to, to get through to the knockouts. As for key players leaving the club, they include centre-back Beyond Engels who went to Reims, centre-back Demetrius Nicolau to Empoli, centre-forward Ahmed Hassan's loan deal expired, and Gil Diaz also went back to Monaco. They made a total of 7.5 million euros. A uh, decent business for a smaller club, at least they did better than Tottenham last season. And last but not least on the list guys, Tottenham Hotspur. They're currently managed by the 47-year-old Maurizio Pochettino Tino, who played his club career at PSG and Espanyol and once marshaled the back lines for Argentina. Before becoming the manager of Tottenham Hotspur back in 2014, he was at the helm of Southampton and Espanyol. Pochettino is quite notorious for never winning a single piece of silverware despite being very highly rated by most. But he is also responsible for taking Tottenham Hotspur to their best ever Champions League finish all the way to the final last season despite losing to Liverpool. So let's talk a bit about Tottenham Hotspur's Champions League highlights, if there's any. Is there any? Guys, could you remember anything that Tottenham did in the Champions League lately? Well, for your information, Tottenham Hotspur were European Cup semi-finalists back in 1962. It would then take another 50 years before Tottenham would return to Europe's elite competition back in the 0-10-11 season, where they made a quarter-final run inspired by Gareth Bale, Luka Modric and company. They then went back to being a typical Europa League team before making their return in the 2016-17 season. The two seasons that followed, Spurs made it to the round of 16, but they true Champions League highlight did come last season when they made a remarkable run to the final, eventually losing to league rivals Liverpool. And what's so great about that achievement is they did that last season without spending a single dime. Key players for Tottenham Hotspur includes their captain and talisman, England's A striker Harry Kane. Of course, a lot of people say he's world class, a lot of people say he's not. Well, he takes a lot of penalties and that racks up the goals, you know what I'm saying? And then there's the Korean maestro Han Ming Sun. Last season's hero Lucas Moura, who I think should start way more games than he does. And then there's Christian Eriksen. Despite wanting to leave the club, I think he is one of the best players in this team. Hugo Lloris, Toby Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen will all be key in helping Tottenham keeping the ball out the back of the net. As for key transfers, Tottenham Hotspur didn't make a whole lot of signings, but they made a few good ones. So let's get into that. The Argentinian midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso on loan from Real Betis. He is now injured, so I don't know how well that loan deal will pan out. Ryan Sessegnon, the young, talented Fulham left back, was brought in as cover for Danny Rose and Ben Davies. Well, I think he will replace Danny Rose, who is quite disgruntled at the club. And then the big one, young French midfielder Tangui Ndombele from Olympic Lyon, and he was a record transfer fee for Tottenham Hotspur, and he has already proven that he is worth gold. Tottenham Hotspur went from spending zero last season to 114 million euros. 
Bravo. As for the key players leaving the club, Kieran Trippier left for Atletico Madrid and Fernando Llorente went to Napoli on a free. They did make 35 million euros during the summer transfer window. So with Tottenham spending all that money, I think they should do better than last season, right? Right guys? Well, we, we should we should we shall see. So now guys, it's the time where I predict group B. Bayern Munich, Red Star Belgrade, Olympiacos, and Tottenham Hotspur. And once again, I'm going to split the teams up in two groups. The teams that are most likely to go through and the teams that are most likely not to. Those teams that are most likely not to are Red Star Belgrade and Olympiacos. And the other two teams, Tottenham Hotspur and Bayern Munich, should definitely go through. And note I use the word should. It doesn't mean that it would happen. So, guys, let me start with fourth place. Coming in fourth in this group, I think it's going to be Savena Zvezda or Red Star Belgrade. They did come in fourth last season and the fans were quite disgruntled when I predicted them not to go through to the round of 16 i think i predicted them to come in third and one of the big teams to flop but that didn't happen i've seen a lot of red star belgrade they are a very very feisty team very very gritty team never ever give up but i think they depend on milan boyan way too much in goal so it's gonna be hard keeping the likes of harry kane lucas mora han ming son Robert Lewandowski or even Daniel Podence over there from Olympiacos quiet. It's going to be very, very difficult. So I'm going to say Red Star Belgrade coming fourth. They will pick up a point or two during the group phase, especially in the home games where they're, they're formidable at home. The stadium, the Maracana, is very, very intimidating. Let's just make that clear. So I'm going to go for them to come in fourth, though. Don't, don't stone me, Red Star fans. Please don't stone me. All right, so coming in third, I'm going to go for Olympiacos, guys. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it boring here. I'm not going to go for any upsets in this group because the way I see it, Tottenham and Bayern Munich, they are too good for these teams. They're too good for these teams. And the signings that these teams made, well, when I say these teams, I'm talking about Red Star and Olympiacos. It's not indicative of, you know, going on to defeat bigger teams in the Champions League. Not at all. It can happen, though. I would love to see some upsets, but I don't think, it, I don't think it's going to be big enough to go through to the round of 16. So Olympiacos, man, who should play very well at home, I don't think they're going to move on to the round of 16. So Europa League for Olympiacos. Guys, what do you think? Do you agree with me or not? Second in the group, I'm going to go for Tottenham Hotspur last season's finalists. I think Tottenham is a very good team, but they're very, very inconsistent. One week, they could come up and be world beaters. The next week, they would lose to the 20th place team in the league. So... Tottenham, they need to, you know, iron out those chinks and try to put on more consistent performances. They definitely got what it takes to defeat Bayern Munich. I'm not going to write them off when it comes to Bayern Munich. Saw what they did to Dortmund last season. But then again, it's Dortmund. But I expect them to get past Olympiacos and Red Star Belgrade, at least picking up eight points from these teams. They could pick up jaws on the road, you know. It's not guaranteed to win in Greece nor in Serbia. So Tottenham should do well against those teams. And against Bayern Munich, they should be able to pick up at least, at least, guys, I'm going to say two points. So I'm going to go for them to come in second. As for Bayern Munich, man, I'm going to put them first because I don't think they would have any trouble beating both Red Star and Olympiacos across two legs. The team is, is just too stacked up. And, you know, despite them not doing great in Europe across the last two seasons or so, I still think when, when, when they come up against teams, smaller teams, they're going to they're gonna smash them. Olympiacos, six points. I think Red Star, six points. So that's 12 points. Definitely they will top the group. They should pick up, mm, let's say, at least a win against Tottenham, which will take them up to at least 15, 14 to 15 points in this group. So... I'm going to go for Niko Kovacic, Bayern Munich to top the group, move on to the round of 16. Guys, do you agree or not? Let me know your predictions in the comment section down below. And let me repeat my group B predictions. Coming in fourth, Red Star Belgrade. Third, Olympiacos. Second, Tottenham Hotspur. And topping the group, Bayern Munich. Guys, remember this is only my opinion. I could be 
dead wrong and i wouldn't mind these teams prove me wrong well when i say these teams i mean red star and olympiacos or even tottenham hotspur proved me wrong to go on to top the group guys we will see upsets we could see tottenham coming in last we could see bayern munich coming in third we never we, we don't know what's gonna happen but guys the season is ahead of us and we are predicting so we shall see how everything pans out guys again if you're interested in copying one of these cards visit cardsblog.com slash dominic rich the link will be in the description box down below use the code dominic rich fc to get five percent off if you're new around here consider hitting the subscribe button smash the thumbs up button go check out all my other awesome content on the channel and until next time peace out rich squad